Welcome to Deck Analysis and Testing. Today we are looking at Ogdoadic. Ogdoadic is a deck that attempts to make Snake Ring broken by being a graveyard-focused reptile deck. The deck is based around reviving light and dark, mainly level 4 and 8 snakes from the graveyard by tributing from your field. And even if you don't draw the broken mill 4 spell, there are still plenty of ways you can mill your reptiles or search them using your skill. Let's have a look at the cards. First is our light, level 4. Uh, Octoadic, this card can be sent from the hand to the graveyard to send a dark reptile from your deck to the graveyard. And also if you control no monsters or only Octoadics, you can revive this card for free, but it banish itself when it leaves the field. And also you lock into reptiles while this card is face up in the monster zone. Even though it just banishes itself when it leaves, and also you only have one copy because this is a free-to-play version, you still have plenty of ways to put it back to the graveyard, which we will talk about later. Next is the Dark Level 4. This card, when number special summoned, can search any Ogdoatic spell trap from your deck to your hand, which is pretty good as a secondary starter. And also, um, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard and then mill a Light Reptile Master from your deck to the graveyard. Next is the Final Level 4. This card uh, can be uh, special, it can be added to your hand, rather by pitching a card from your hand to, gra to graveyard, and also if it is special summoned from a graveyard or sent from the field to the graveyard, you can have your opponent draw a card and you add an Ogdoatic monster from your deck to your hand and then both players discard a card. So this is a pretty weird searcher. If you revive this card from the graveyard, you can trigger this effect or if you uh, use it as a tribute, and it kind of gets you to what you want, but you do g give your opponent some free draws and stuff to send. So it is not ideal, but this deck is not very good with these kind of effects. So we gotta do what we gotta do. And finally, for the last level 4 that is not actually uh, Ogdoadic, it is uh, this random reptilian level 4 tuner, which can just special summon itself for free, so it gives you access to uh, level 8 synchros, which is pretty nice. And uh, let's talk about the high level Ogdoadics. We first have the main extender, uh, Curse, I think it's called. So this card can be special summoned from a graveyard by tributing one monster, and also uh, if it is a special summoned, you can... Um, you must let your opponent special summon one monster from their graveyard if they have anything in their graveyard, which is kind of weird and it's not not good, but if you do this in your first turn, you can still summon this card without giving your opponent any free stuff. And also, when it is um, special summoned, you can revive a level 4 or lower Ogdoadic from the graveyard. Usually, you will be either reviving the Spell Trap Searcher or uh, this card, which kind of gets you to any monster that you want. Okay, next we have the boss monsters, we have three of them. First is the queen. The queen can be special summoned by attributing two monsters on your field. And also, uh, if your opponent special summons a monster from the graveyard, you can send one card they control to the graveyard. And if a monster is sent from your opponent's hand or deck, to the graveyard, which you can do forcefully by using the effect of the bad level 4, you can basically just summon any light or dark reptile from the graveyard just for free. So you can even summon the big guys if you want. Next is the king, also needs two tributes, and also if your opponent adds a card from the deck to your hand, let's say with something like the bad level 4, you can force them to discard a random card from their hand, and also if a monster your opponent controls is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, like with your other Octoadics, you can add a light or dark reptile from your deck or graveyard to your hand, which is pretty nice. And finally, we have the big boss monster of the deck, Ogdo Abyss. It's the only level 10 in this deck for now, there's another level 10 that's not in the game yet. Um, this card needs free tributes to special summon, but realistically you're probably gonna special summon it with other effects. And also once while this is card is face up on the field, you can just send all special summoned monsters, or just all monsters actually, just send them all to the graveyard except for those that are special summoned from the graveyard. So it does send your own stuff, and um, in that includes the tokens that you get from Daybreak. 
But um, if you summon any other things from the graveyard, those cards won't be affected. Okay, speaking of Daybreak, we are going to talk about this card. This card is a really good quick play spell. It basically gives you a free, uh, a whole bunch of free tokens for you to tribute or to use as a like material, and uh, also has a really good graveyard effect that helps you put back banished monsters to the deck and then mill a reptile from your deck, which can be the, the card that you just put back in your deck. So this is a way that you can recycle back the Nunu that you use to um, banish itself when it leaves the field. And next we have Ogdoradic Water Lily. This is like a bad snake rain, kinda. So it only mills one reptile, but um, if you have five or more different reptile monsters in your graveyard, you can special summon any one of them for free. And that includes the boss monsters, so you can just reborn one of them for absolutely free, which is pretty nice. This combined with Snake Rain does allow you to play through some disruptions by just activating Snake Rain and activating Water Lily to immediately make the uh, level 10 before committing to anything else, so you can force out some interruptions. Let's say your opponent has a Master Quick Effect, you can force them to use it on this card before you actually start using your other automatic stuff. And Snake Rain is really simple, it just lets you discard a card and then just send four reptiles from your deck to the graveyard. This is really good in this deck and basically if you draw this card you got lots of combos you can do. And for the extra deck, it's a uh, generic links, but uh, there are some um, specific links that we could play in this deck, namely the reptilian link to this card needs two uh, monsters including a reptile. And if it's Link Summoned, you can make a monster your opponent controls to attack a zero. And also, um, you can add different reptiles from your deck to your hand, up to the number of zero attacker monsters that your opponent has. And also, it locks you into reptiles from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. So, uh, this card usually just uh, is useful to make your opponent's attack zero, and then you can link it off into some other link monster, like a, a big link free, and then just attack your opponent's monsters and deal a lot of damage. And also, it, I guess it searches a card, but realistically, you probably want to link it off to make uh, better link frees or like even link fours if you have good link force in your deck. You can also play some rank 4s and uh, level 8 synchros because this deck does have uh, pretty well access into them. So uh, any two level fours make um, Dark Rebellion, and if you use Nunu, uh, you can also just have it go back to the graveyard instead of being banished. But Nunu does lock you into Reptile, so you can't really do that with uh, Dark Rebellion. But you can do that with some other stuff like uh, King of the Feral Imps, which is a Reptile. And uh, Draco Berserker is just a really good level eight that we can just easily get from the bundle. And it's good going first, going second, and yeah, just all around a pretty good level 8 synchro. And as always, we have the expensive version of the deck, and we're playing pretty much the same stuff, but we just have more copies of Nunu as more starters. We're only playing one of the tuner, because we can actually search the tuner with the skill, which let's talk about. The skill uh, can basically swap any of your reptiles into another reptile with a different attribute, so if you uh, swap a light, you get a dark, and if you swap a dark, you get a light. It's pretty straightforward. You can only use it once per jewel, but it's honestly probably enough. And even if you don't have the skill, the deck is still quite consistent because we have tons of starters. Snake Red is obviously the best one, but uh, Water Lily is also pretty good with uh, the dark level 4 that also searches Water Lily. And also, uh, Nunu does send stuff from the deck to the graveyard, which is pretty nice as well. For the extra deck, we're just playing better stuff in general. We have, we're have still playing Draco Berserker because it's still probably the best level 8 synchro that we could make. Uh, but we are also playing King of the Feral Imps, which I talked about. Just basically searches new follow-up or extension, depending on what other things you have. We have the Utopia package into Utopia the Lightning for OTKs. We have Castell to remove stuff, and we also have the Nightmare Links, and of course, the reptilian monster as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the replays. Honestly, just by looking at this deck, you might think that it's pretty good because of like, you know, Snake Rain milling four cards and then all of the cards are graveyard focused so they just keep coming back. 
But um, as you will be able to see in this video, uh, yeah, uh, this deck does have quite a bit of weaknesses. Uh, we open with three Snake Rays, which is pretty funny. This card is actually not once per turn, but we just need one to pop off. Uh, the other two can just be this card for I guess. Uh, we're gonna mill four and just combo off. Uh, we do have the level four tuner as well, so we can also end on a Draco Berserker. Uh, and we can Daybreak to tribute to level eight, get three tokens, and then Daybreak send uh, uh, level four back to the deck and then pitch uh, level 10 and then we can just tribute the uh, free tokens to make the level 10 and that's pretty good. We have uh, Draco Berserker Banish as a quick effect and also the Ogdo Abyss to send the entire field to the graveyard but it does send our own um, Draco Berserker as well so I'm trying to use the effect of Draco Berserker first before I use Ogdo Abyss so I can get more value out of that. Uh, our opponent summons two monsters. I I've but it was fine until I see the new skill, which gives them a free level 2 and it, it just make black growth and just blow up our entire field. And I guess we could make, um, use the effect of Draco Berserker, I guess. But, um, I'm just not very familiar with what this deck does after the new support. And they just are able to summon Screw Serpent and then just, they just make a uh, Squire Saga, which confuses me for a bit until I see them make, um, uh, the Battle Wars Synchro, which can attack twice and just go for an OTK, so yeah, uh, not the best start, but yeah, we probably could have played better by just using the effect of the level 10 before he makes any synchro monsters. So um, that was embarrassing, so now let's actually see what this deck can actually do. This time we we're going second, so um, let's see uh, how well we can break through our opponent's ball. We open pretty well, I mean, any hand with Snake Raid is pretty good in general, but we also have the two other spells which will really help break our opponent's board. Our opponent spent S4s and they open really well. They basically have access to their link free which you will be able to, you will be able to see and also have uh, the line to um, making Gravitino to make everything go to the banished pile instead of back to the graveyard which is really annoying in a graveyard focused deck like we are playing. So our opponent was just end on a leg free, but they will have a way to uh, put more monsters out using the back row. We're just gonna lead with a snake rain and then use a lily to just bring out a copy of the Ogdo Abyss to force up his disruptions. And he will use Justify to try to negate that, but we also drew the Daybreak, so we can just tribute that in response. We get a bunch of tokens, which doesn't really matter because it's all gonna be destroyed anyway. Uh, but now with nothing on our opponent's field, we can be free to combo off, and I imagine this card is probably going to be uh, the S Force Trap, which needs an S Force on the field to activate. So now we're just free to combo off. Uh, we can't really OTK this turn, but we can still at least make a level eight, which is probably still enough. Our opponent draws a card; they can't really out our board, and they will be scooping. So it is the third and final game of this video, and we're going first. So let's see what we can uh, do. Our opponent is playing. <laughs> tunes, and uh, that should be pretty easy, right? Let's uh, activate Snake Rain as usual. Uh, this like can play without Snake Rain, but um, opening Snake Rain is definitely ideal, and uh, really raises the ceiling on what this deck could end on. Uh, we were going to use the effects of the bad reptile, forcing him to discard a card, but uh, we can search uh, Alteratic ourselves. We're going to revive back to level 4 so we can have more tribute fodder. We're going to use Daybreak to tribute to level 8 to get 2 tokens and then use the king to summon itself. Daybreak to shuffle back to Nunu and then send uh, Nunu back to the graveyard. We're going to need Water Lily to revive a uh, level 10 and that's, just, that's probably the best end you can make just by using the Ogduatic in Archetype Monsters themselves. Uh, we're going to use the effect of King to just send a random card and we hit the Toon Kingdom. Things are looking really good for us until I see what they are trying to do. They're going to use Toon Table of Contents, but before that they're going to grab themselves a uh, normal Toon World, which isn't ideal for them, but it works in that scenario. He's going to use Comic Hand to grab our Ogdo Abyss, use Toon Rollback, and because Comic Han allows his monsters to be tunes and attack directly, he can just attack directly twice and just win the game. Yeah, um... This also shows a uh, weakness of this deck, is that 
the boss monsters of this deck have pretty weird quick effects that just sometimes can do absolutely nothing. So for this example, uh opponent just can can just steal uh um Ogdo Abyss, which is our best monster, and the king and queens don't really do a whole lot else, and yeah. That's yeah, it's, it's what it is.